Another day, another DAC! I know, you people don't enjoy these videos. It's just, I mean, you, you care. There's a small sliver of you that are like, Sweet Home Alabama? You're playing Skinnerd on a Gustard? Man, you're in the fucking sky! I mean, look, a good DAC is a good DAC. And it's just like, to, to sit here and as have my job be to pick apart a $1,100 DAC or $1,100? It's $1,100. Um, it's, it's less fun than you'd think. I know you're on paper, it looks like great fun, but when you have to listen to Leonard Skinner, like seriously, like wait. Did he just fart? Okay, no, then, you know. So, um, we're back at it. Um, I don't know if this is coming out before or after the LKS DAC, which was $1,500. So now we're, we're down to like 1,100. So we're almost out of put a diamond in the title territory. This is the Gustard DAC A22, and it's a good DAC. I feel like uh, interspecies reviewers here, where you go to that place where everyone's a 10, and it's like, well, everyone's a 10. You're spending $1,000 on a machine that just, it's, it's its job. Take the, take the digital, on digital, play. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna working down, actually, I'm working from the most expensive. Uh, the next DAC that I put in the desk review will be the Own X8 Magic DAC. And I'm really interested, since I'm doing them all three in a row, like, my real, if I'm really gonna notice, like, that FPGA is gonna be, like, just less than this Gustard. And I don't even know the, um, the DAC ship. Let's check it out. It's just sent to me by APOS, by the way. So, they just wanted to get all their DACs out of the, out of the way. Get them out. AK four four nine nine EQ for dual mono dual so I know the four nine nine is at least the their top of the line premiere, and uh, you can actually get it with or without USB, which I thought was interesting. Um, and here's the weird thing: like the shit Jotunheim comes with or without a USB DAC, and that costs a hundred bucks. If you get this eleven hundred dollar Gustard A twenty two without the DAC the USB, fifty bucks. It's a $50 option. I, I, okay. All right. You know, so it's 1100 or 1050, 49. Um, put music back on for a second. Wait, what, what's playing? I don't even know where wires are anymore. When salmon home to you. That's uh, M83 Midnight City, by the way, and just listen to that song, please, in the highest possible quality you can find, because it's a wonderful fucking track. It really, like, if you once you've heard that track, if you hear it while driving, you will immediately crash your car into a guardrail. It's amazing. Um, so, again, this DAC thing is going on, uh, Acoustic Research ARH1s, the uh, lovely um, Sennheiser HC660Ss. Um, all running off Jerry the Cable Guy wires, linked in the description. And these, of course, my Stelias. I trust you. I trust you to not fuck me. Never fuck me, Tony. Don't ever fuck me. Um, so this is a giant black box. And you have inputs, like most giant black boxes do on this channel. Uh, not as extensive, not even close to as extensive as it was on the LKS. I'm assuming I'm doing these in order, by the way. Let's see if I can stand this up. We've got power input, two major giant switches that switch the actual input voltage. And when I got this unit, it was set to 220. So you had to go in there and set both switches. Both switches have to be switched. You can't switch just one switch. But both switches, because it's, I think it's because it's two, I think the whole thing is power supplied twice. It's mono DAX. So you have to set 220 to 110 on both. If it make sure you check wherever you live. USB input, AES ABU, which is an XLR type digital connection, coax, um, USB, and then one IIS or I. I forget what people told me it's pronounced. How do you pronounce the HDMI looking one? I'm dumb. I've only needed to use that once, and that was on IFI stuff, and never again. And then you got your four main outputs. I really kind of like. If I had to say something, which I should, I kind of like these like old school looking RCA connectors. They're not like shiny, but they also don't look like fake gold. They look like real gold. They're like a dull, real gold. If I had to talk about the actual body of the unit, 
Um, this is another one of those units that weighs so much that you're wondering what the resources were just to get it to you. Like, I'm a, a DAC needs shielding from the outside elements. You need to protect it from interference and cell phones, things like that. So you got to put in a metal box, usually. Like, the Gashelis, the original ones were all in Alexa and cases, and they sort of went away from that and went to the metal boxes with the, with the fascias on the front, because it cuts down on EMI. But this, when you turn it on its side, oh! You can see um, what's happening. And I don't know if you can tell from the video, but the sidewall of this is literally a centimeter. And I said that because I have more viewers outside of America than I have inside America. But America, that shit's thick af. That's all you gotta know about a centimeter, it's thick af. That, that's bulletproof levels of aluminum thickness. I don't even know if it's aluminum, it's so heavy. Here's the screen protector, I shoved it down here. That feels thin, that feels thin, but this side, like you could just, I mean, can I, can I, I'm gonna hit that, whatever that is. Yeah, there it is. That's how thick the sidewalls are, that, that thick. So there's got some girth to it. I actually really like the knurled feet on this too. If we're talking about DAX and you're spending a thousand dollars, you better hope that every aspect of it makes you want to spend that money. And these knurled aluminum feet things should be knobs on something else. You know what? I bet you they're fucking knobs on something else. Either something Gustard makes or a subsidiary of Gustard. Oh, Jesus. It's so heavy. And um, I would like to open this one up. I couldn't open up the LKS. It had that sticker that said, if warranty void, if, if opened. And there's no sticker on this one. But there's also, if you didn't notice, there's no screws. Like, I don't even... Oh, <laughs> there's a couple here. I guess this whole panel, like, slides out. I'm not doing that. I ain't going that far. It ain't worth it. It's, it is not worth that. I'm just going to plop this back on this mess of wires. We're going to pretend all that's nice and clean. Um, also, I want to mention, I want to do a shout out for the JDS Labs EL2. This is the full on element with the DAC built in. I'm just bypassing it and going RCA in. Followed by the 789, which is now at a new lower price. So I will link in the description to the new $300 THX 789. Um, let it rain forever in our hearts. Because at that price, don't even bother with the SP200. Get a 789. It's dumb. Even if it's got the worst logo. I like the original ones that don't have, don't say drop on it, but whatever. So, these are my two test bed amps for testing out this DAC. Now, I've used this DAC, I think, way, way long ago when I first got it. And it was like, all right, then now I'm like sitting here and I have to actually listen to things. It's like my job or some shit. And it is actually like a joy. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and it sounds like I'm making up bullshit about uh, uh, Zio says, you, you say you can't hear any difference, but then you say it's a joy to listen to. Make up your fucking mind. No. A thousand dollars is a lot of money. A lot of money. And if you're invested, if, if you have, let me put this, how do I put this? If two hours of your day, that's my new, that's my new thing. Two hours of your day is dedicated to listening to the reproduction of music for funsies. Not fun. Funsies. Sure, you could think about spending that little... You want to get that like 0.48% more out of your music than you would out of like a $500 DAC or a $300 DAC. Even then it has a hard... I have a hard time stomaching the words to make that come out. But there is something about having like a Gustard or an LKS or a higher end DAC that just... It's like, if you can, why not? But it's also, I don't want to tell people that they're missing out of their music because they haven't spent a thousand dollars in the fucking DAC. So this is more, this is more like a conflict episode where Zeos just comes to terms. Like when I do the Magic DAC, the X8 Magic DAC from Own, that's a stomachable price. It, I can, I can swallow that. Not physically, that would be really impressive. But I, it's like, okay, that's sort of like as good as and most people need to get. As good as like, all, uh, not to be a communist, but I think that's probably as good as all people need to get, but that's communist, we're not doing that. So free market dictates that I have to say this $1,000 DAC might still be an option for most of you. Let's plug something else in, what do I got? What are you on? All right, you're balanced, 660S, balanced. Um, 
if I do that thing, um, I should talk about the remote. Um, should I say um a couple more times? The front has a analog power button. And unlike the LKS where you could turn that on and then stand by it with the remote, the remote does not have standby. So if you want to shut this off, you have to shut it off and then turn it on. It's a big old click, click, click. And I'm not going to do the click, 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 because it'll disconnect that and then it'll, it'll do the thing. The remote, which controls this unit. Um, where is it? Okay, so you could basically lose the remote and still get control of everything on this unit. I just want to double check that just now. Yeah. So the there's a knob on the right with a push button in the center. A jog shuttle. I miss jog shuttles. Hey, I had a laser disc growing up as a kid. My dad had a laser disc. He brought home a hook on laser disc, dating myself, but hook on laser disc was awesome. And Remote controls for Laserdisc players used to have these big fucking knobs in the bottom with like, it had a knob that you turn like this, and then it had like a spinny, spinny, spinny for frame by frame. And this has ugh, basically what would equate to, I mean, they couldn't put this on non iPod stuff. They put this on other portable players, but it's a nice little ridge thing and it's controlling the volume. You see how fast it's controlling that volume? 20, 30, 40, 50. Uh, 30, 20, 10, 0. And then you press the middle button, and you could pick ISS. Optical is obviously hooked up. I have optical and, co and USB hooked up. Coaxial doesn't have a thing. AES, USB is hooked up, 384. Um, if you're going to use it with volume, the problem is the remote. Because you get mute menu, which we'll talk about, return from the menu, which we'll talk about, up, down, left, right, play, pause, which is like... Ooh. Volume up and down is this rocker on the bottom, which I like way more than having it be part of this, like, navigation wheel. I prefer either a left and right or an up and down where the thumb rests. When you hold it, if you close your eyes and pick up a fucking remote, where your thumb is by default should be the volume control. And so many get that shit wrong. Like, infinitely remotes get that shit wrong. So I like that it's right there and I can rock this way or that way. Then you get three buttons, DAC, amp, and stream. And I don't think they do anything. Because I think this is a standard Gustard remote because AMP doesn't do anything and DAC doesn't do anything and Stream doesn't do anything. Unless when DSD is being played, which I don't test with DSD, then I might do something else because DSD streams are a thing. But if you have a streaming player or an AMP or a DAC, maybe this is a switch between something else and another unit. Play Pause also does nothing. I mean, it's Enter when you go to the menu. Uh, up and down on this are the input change. So USB, AES, coaxial, optical. And then left and right do nothing. Now when you hit the menu button, I'm gonna have to pick this heavy motherfucker up again. <sighs> Why do they make, they do this, I think I just need to work out. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, you cannot be an audio reviewer unless you have good guns. Cause you have to like, uh, I'm gonna get this stretch out and I wanna get a cramp in my neck. Oh God, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, it literally is like it could hurt your wrist. I would not ask um, a small man or a large woman to pick this up. You need a big man. Big man in town. So I'm going to hit menu. I'm going to hit it again. And our choices are, and this is it. There's no other pages. It doesn't go any deeper. PCM filter, DSD filter, jitter attenuation, dir BW, uh... <sighs> USB mode, phase invert, and brightness. So you know what brightness is, the brightness of the screen. If we go up to PCM filter, you have slow, super slow, short, sharp, low D shot, um, short, slow, sharp, slow, super, that's it. It's very, very few filters. DSD filter. Now, if you remember on the LKS DAC, oh God, I'm putting this down for a second. Literally, I need to rest. If you remember on the LKS DAC, I'm gonna lose hand feeling in this hand. I, I, in fact, I still have the fucking page open, don't I? Oh God. Oh God, I'm gonna look at it again and have a linear fucking contraction of my my cerebral. What is PLL? And PLL ha talks about BW and BW is bandwidth and PLL bandwidth and look, I'm not getting back into this. I fucking refuse. I refuse. Just, just go back to the LKS DAC. Watch that whole madness. But all you gotta know is it's basically a slight way that it processes data differently. 
and you have the option on the DSC to LBL or HBL, which is a lot different than the fucking six, ow, my thumb, than this, ow, my fucking everything, hold on. There we go. Then the everything that you could change on that one. Then you get jitter attenuation. Jitter is when digital signals come from something like optical and they go from one place to another, but there's no clock data. So the computer's going beep, 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 and the DAC's going beep, 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 and they're, they're just not in sync and you can get jitter. But the jitter is so small that usually you can't hear it, but apparently you could fix that with something on here, which has jitter attenuation of mode one and two. I could hear no difference. Uh, DIR, BW, normal or high. Again, with the bandwidth. And I don't know what DIR bandwidth is, but I mean, why wouldn't I have bandwidth on high? You can then change from a Windows PC USB mode to a Mac, which will break it because I have a Windows PC if I switch it over. Phase inversion. So you could literally just invert the phase of the DAC. And that's an audiophile weirdo thing which has something, it can it can have an effect on like speakers, if you're trying to time speakers and subs or something together. But since you'd be using hopefully this as your only DAC, it's kind of weird. Like that you would want to like, I don't get it. I don't get it, but you can do that. And then you get brightness and that, that so that's the end of the menu. I was hoping that the, the LKS was pretty devoid of options. This has a menu, ooh, a menu, but it's really just very basic stuff. Nothing is touching the RME ADI-2 as far as like actual features. So the reason I missed the jog shuttle, I sure I get to that is because if I hit the volume down, it's it's not bad. It, it starts off nice and slow, which I have to tilt this again, fucker. 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 30, 20, 10, zero. So it does actually ramp up. You can you get a not, it's actually one of the better volume controls. I wish it was a jog shuttle, because that'd be sweet. Jog shuttle volume. Actually, jog shuttle volume on a remote would be terrifying. Because if you dropped it and it went, it would blow stuff up. So it's got one of the nicer, like controllable, like click, like you could hold it down for four decibels, and then it starts going fast. So at least it's got that. I'm gonna play music again. I'm an optical in, which is pause that, take this and unpause this. Then take the, where's this? No, this is this. There we go. Oh, I'm in 23 decibels down. I don't think this has a switch to go from a line out to a pre out. I think if you want it to be like, if you're using DAX with their own volume controls, just max the volume out and you're done. That's it. Just don't touch the volume again. Why would that's it? Just, then, you, then you just made an abyss soundtrack is basically all I'm playing here. Now, if I lower this down, I can do that thing that everyone was talking about the last episode, where you fucking max the shit out of the seven eight nine, full tilt to avoid using its internal volume controls, and then you use this thing's volume control. And there's something to it. And I don't want to, I, I want to say it in a couple videos, this way people try it, but I don't want to be responsible if you accidentally blow your shit up, because that's six watts of channel, unlocked, to whatever headphones you're wearing, and you gotta hope that the DAC doesn't mm, accidentally go back up to full. This is a magical experience, though. If you've not listened, if you've not watched Made in Abyss, and I'm not, like, one to push anime on this channel, <laughs> but um, watch Made in Abyss, and then just, just at least so you can listen to the soundtrack and have a point of reference of what fucking magic is, because um, Kevin Pankin fucking destroyed it with this. And I'm probably gonna get pulled off of the fucking the YouTubes with that. Um, There's nothing else to say. I'm gonna keep this video short. That's it. I I think I would I would I am so fucking happy to be able to listen to things like this. It's just it's a DAC and it's expensive. Like it's not. If it was extremely expensive, I'd have at least more to yell about. But I just did a more expensive DAC, so it's it's good. I mean, it collects. I have a little bit to say about the like the texture. It's a little bit too rough looking. Like I guess. That the way it reflects light is sort of like off-putting. And it also still collects fingerprints. Everything collects my fingerprints. I'm the worst. Um, but I guess it's, the fact that I'm the worst is a good judge of everyone else. Yeah. 
I think if you're looking for like an end game DAC, this should definitely be one of the ones you consider. But just no, it's very simple. There's nothing really going on in the menus that's gonna like bring it out and give it a reason. At least the um, zero to sixteen, zero to fifteen sweep on the LKS was like that's new. That's actually swap it like moving the way that thing sounds around. And this is just a solid. Like this should this should be the most expensive type of DAC that ever appears at an audio show in like one of those rooms with two hundred thousand dollar equipment. This is fine. If you're using a DAC, if you're not running an analog source, like a, like just insane people, like pure analog needs to be tape. This is this is this is an end game DAC, and it sounds like an end game DAC, and I don't hate it. The end. Links to Apos in the description. Um, links to everything in the description. I'm done. I'm literally I'm done. We're gonna keep this. This is it. I got chicken in the oven. I got to worry about it. it's got Reaper flakes on it. See, remember when you made those Reaper flakes chicken, and then you ate it, and then you got real sick. I hope that's not true. Hi, future Zeos. Um, Gustard, I wanna try other Gustard things. I know they make amps and things like that. I think I would be probably more impressed by something like that than a thousand dollar DAC. I've never been like all on board with a thousand dollar DAC trying to suck them off. Eh, it's great. It literally, it, I, I'm listening to this music and I wanna cry, but I've also listened to this music on cheaper things and still wanna cry. So really what matters more, the music or the DAC, or the headphone, or the amp, or the Jerry the Cable Guy cables, really nice cables for cheap, linked in the description. Um, so I'm linking everything, that wallpaper's in the description, every wallpaper's on Patreon and Subscribestar. Uh, $5 patrons and Subscribestar subscribers, or substars as I like to call them, um, they get to see these reviews early, so they can know that I'm like, eh, that was not a deck. Way before everyone else in the world. Um, you also get to ask me any questions you want on platform, and participate in the yard sales. Yard sales start from the 1st to the 10th of every month, and anything that I get from a company that they're just like, here, we don't want this back, because you touched it. You got Corona. Um, well, that'll end up in the yard sale, and then you could have my Corona. Is that a song? That's my Bologna. I love Weird Al. So, um... Everyone can just touch everyone's things if you have a yard sale. And anything I need to sell will be there from the 1st to the 10th, the blind silent auction. I ship free um, continental United States, half shipping international. There is a higher tier, the $10 Patreon behind the scenes private telegram chat tier, which sounds very impressive. And those people have come up with all sorts of neat dicks, 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 neat dicks. They've come up with neat dicks and tricks. Triptics, like putting that up all the way and then using the volume here to control it seems to bring a little bit more out of the 789, which by the way, the 789, $300. Cheapest it's ever been. Jump on it, because now it's not a matter of worrying about it being on sale for a short amount of time, it's worrying about the stock. So although that came back in stock, even though they were doing 400, I don't care. Anyway, this is done. Check out Hi-Fi Guides. Check out the Hi-Fi Guides forum. Want to look at the forum? I love going to the forum. Oh no, I saw this. Oh God, there's an iLoud triangle. What is happening here? Um, is THX precisely a AAA a bad thing? Oh wow, now we're getting into some real thick stuff on this forum. Look at the words. There's so many words. 177 replies and 814 views. Look at these people are madness. You people are mad. I love them all. And hopefully the fact that uh, DMS and I run this forum will keep it a little less full of itself. I just, that's all I care about. Like, a thousand dollar DAC is fine, but don't go telling people they have to have this to enjoy music. You fucking don't. You fucking do not. You don't even have to have nice hat. You have to have KPH 30 eyes and a Fio BTR 5. I'm going to say 5, because I know the 5 is better than the 3. Although the 3K is starting to shine to me. I'm going to... You could do you could do enjoy music with, for the cheap. This is just when you're getting in there and it's like, you know what? I got nothing better to spend my, my government check on. Let's get a Gus start. So that's the end of it. Uh, Hi-Fi Guides, Hi-Fi Guides Forum. That, there's no GoFundMes. There's no upcoming events ever again. So that's a thing. Um, stick around on this channel and see maybe I lose my mind in the next mm, two months. If I, if I start literally having cuts on my arms and things, call someone. I'm not okay. But uh, for right now, this is, sounds pretty good. I'm gonna go back to listen to Made in Abyss. You should go go watch Made in Abyss because we all need to go on an adventure together. And that's a damn good one. So yeah, yeah, her, me, this, out, good, bye.